I've just watched Rings of Power episode one. I'm gonna talk about my top five things from the episode and what I'm excited to see. The first thing I wanna talk about are the set designs. They are incredible. Possibly some of the best set designs I've ever seen in TV or film. The elvish city of Lindon looked amazing. The way the orange leaves were falling on the ground in this sort of perfect mess, combine that with the elvish statues looking out to this beautiful horizon, as well as the tapestries they had woven, sort of reminded me of a medieval tapestry of a unicorn I'd seen once before at an art museum. I also love the makeshift homes of the Harfoots, the way they camouflaged into the forest, popped out their homes. It kind of gave you the impression of the Shire, but an early version of the Shire, in that it integrates into the hillsides and the tree trunks and the grass. When we see the village that the men are living in in the south, you get the impression that not everyone is flourishing in this time of peace that the elves are rapping on about in this episode. Things are a bit miserable, it's cold, it's grimy. The set design there really added to the tension that is brewing in that village. The next thing that I loved were the map visuals in this episode. They really helped you get an understanding of where these things are taking place in the world, which is massive in its scope. I love the leathery texture of the maps, how it gave it that kind of tactile feel. It was quite refreshing. And I know it's something we've seen a lot in Game of Thrones, the kind of sweeping shots of the digital map, but this felt new and I, um, I don't know, I just wanted to reach out and touch that map and look all over it, basically. <laughs> Transitioning from the maps to these sweeping aerial shots moves me on to my next point on cinematography. These epic aerial shots were a really cool nod back to the Fellowship of the Ring when you see the Fellowship running across Middle-earth on their way to the Mines of Moria. There were some really, really effective use of close-ups in dialogue scenes, especially in scenes with Galadriel. If you look back at Kate Blanchett's performance in the original three films, there were often these extreme close-ups of her piercing gaze that gave the impression that she knows something that others don't. We see these intense piercing gaze shots again in this episode through Morford Clark's performance of Galadriel, which is a really cool hint at the Galadriel that we think she might become. This gets me onto my next point about some of the performances and the characters. Morford Clark as Galadriel was sensational. She's dedicated, driven, and defiant. Really stands out from the rest of her elvish community as someone who still remembers this evil that left such an impression on her. I also really enjoyed watching the Australian actress Markella Cavanaugh playing Nori. It's an interesting mirroring to Galadriel. They're both driven and compelling characters, but are restricted by the people around them that want to protect them. Nori has a sense of wonder about her. She wants to explore the world. She wants to go beyond her Harfoot community. There's also something I noticed. Her last name is Brandyfoot, which is very similar to Mary Duck Brandybuck's last name. I wonder if she is a ancestor of Mary because they both have that sense of bravery and courage about them, which is quite cool to see. On to my last point. I think the episode did a great job of communicating the lore and history of Middle-earth that some viewers might not have heard before introducing primordial evil beings such as Morgoth and the havoc he wrecked on Middle-earth, and also the fact that he was once Sauron's master. As you can probably tell, I love this episode. I'm very pumped for to watch episode two. I'm gonna go into some spoiler predictions right now, so if you don't wanna hear what I'm about to say, I advise you stop watching right now. Three, two, one. Okay, here's my prediction for who is the man in the meteor. I think it is possibly Gandalf or another one of the wizards that are thrown into Middle-earth. They are one of the Valar or the Maya, I can't quite remember. Essentially spirits that Iluvatar has woven into Middle-earth to help protect the beings. However, as we know, some of these wizards can be corrupted by the evils of Sauron and Morgoth. So we'll see what wizard we have here or if it's just a, a new character entirely, I don't know. Anyway, I think it might be a wizard, possibly Gandalf, maybe Saruman, maybe even good old Radagast the Brown. We'll see what happens there, folks.